Yes. Come on. Come on in the room. Come on. Is anybody else excited and ready for Therapy Thursday? I'm excited, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, depending on where you are, it is a stormy night here in Houston, Texas. Born and raised on the playgrounds where I spend most of my days. Houston, Texas, we have a stormy night, but we are still gonna deliver a word that is going to bless your soul. And my prayer is that it will be an assistant to your evolution, a secretary to your becoming process. Come on in the room and you know how I like to do. Could you tag somebody in the chat? Welcome. Look at you being intentional. Welcome. I see you bro being intentional. Welcome. I see you sis being intentional. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, and just welcome somebody else. Even though this is virtual, my desire is to make it feel personal. Tag somebody and say, I see you being intentional because God will do the miracle, but we must present the two fish and the five loaves. And that is us being intentional with what we have. And the time that you have on tonight, you are being intentional with getting some biblical therapeutic word in your life. And I honor you for that. So come on in the room. Thank you so much for all of the love for my wife and I, our birthday last week and um, a like happy early Mother's Day to all mothers in the room. Uh, my wife and my mother and I have a special customized message for you on Sunday for all mothers. Y'all help shape a generation. So I'm excited for everything God is doing. And also thank you so much for everybody who has just been praying for us and giving towards the ministry as we are pursuing a new location. So I want to get to work because I think this is just going to be good. Ever so often, I get the like beautiful privilege of when I'm preparing a message or when I'm engaged in sermon prep. It really speaks to me. It speaks to me. So if it blesses me during sermon prep, I can only imagine what is going to happen when I get to share it with you all. So let's, let's get to work. I want to start tonight by telling y'all about this true story. This is a true story. I was roughly a week out of college, a week out of college, 22, 22 years old, just graduated. And at that time I was really heavily doing Christian rap. I was traveling quite a bit. I was a student pastor and I was doing Christian rap from different churches. And I was driving in from Hutto, Texas. I'll never forget it. They had like a Friday night live. I was rapping with some teenagers and college students. Then I had a chance to minister. People got saved, it was wonderful. So I was driving from Hutto, Texas back to Houston. It was roughly a two hour drive or so. I got home at four in the morning and my mom, did the most evil thing that you could ever do. She came in my room at nine in the morning. Now remember, I said I got home at four. Now if I got home, just went straight to bed without showering any of that, that means I would have five hours of sleep. But I got home, I showered, I was looking at, you know, some of the lyrics I planned on doing for another song, doing all that, so I probably went to bed maybe five, six. And my mom just does the most, like, dark thing that you could ever do. She comes in my room at nine in the morning, and turns on the light. Now you have to understand, my parents are advocates for cleanliness. Like they told me all during my adolescent years, my mom kept saying, Jerry, a wife is not gonna like no dirty husband. Pick up your shoes, pick up your socks. Jerry, a wife's not gonna like no dirty husband. She might think you cute, but no woman wants to deal with a filthy man. So she comes to the room at nine in the morning, turns on the light, and she's like, look at this room. Look at this room. You got your shoes over here. You got your socks, Jerry. There's no wife, she's not gonna wanna deal with the dirty husband. Now I'm tired, I'm sleep deprived, I'm exhausted. And see, when you're sleep deprived, you're not you when you're sleep deprived, okay? You're a little more irritable, all right? The flesh has a likelihood to win when you are sleep deprived, especially when your sleep is interrupted about your room and some socks on the floor. So I, I'm like, okay, I'm tired of this. I walk out the house and I go to an apartment. I'm moving. This is the last Saturday. She is gonna come in my room and wake me up talking about clean my room. The last one, and I'm 22, and I'm a week out of college, I'm gone. So I went to an apartment, I applied, I showed them my pay stubs, and I got the key that day. That night, 
I was sleeping on the floor in my apartment because I was like, listen, I'm gonna get some good rest, true story. And I noticed as I began to move in and everything that every Saturday, my apartment was dirty. And I began to wonder, how, how does my apartment keep getting so dirty? Like I was kind of trained to clean on, on Saturdays and Saturdays I would just be perplexed. Like how, how does my apartment keep looking like this? It's because of the shirt on my couch that I ignored on Monday. It, 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 it's the shoes that I ignored in the middle of the floor on Tuesday and Wednesday. It, it, it's the dish that I left in the sink from the meal I ate on Thursday and Friday. It, it's the sock. <laughs> it's the sock that I kept walking over that I took off originally because the bathroom floor was wet because I got out the shower and I forgot and I just threw the sock on the floor. It was the sock that I kept on overlooking each and every day. It led to me having a filthy apartment on Saturday. All right, here it is, here it is. It was the puddle that causes for us to miss the coming flood. It was overlooking the puddle that causes for us to engage in a flood situation. It was the hundred of bad decisions that led up to the great fall of the ministry. It, it was the fear of the fire that caused for us to overlook the smoke. It, it's, it's the smoke will kill you before the fire ever burns you. And what is the fire? That is the act. That's actually, that's like actually having sex, actually getting high. So like, okay, we're, we're not going to get the fire, but you keep on inhaling smoke. And what is smoke? Smoke is the dismissal of a standard or principle that you keep overriding to do what you want. <laughs> One more time. What is the smoke? The smoke is the dismissal of a standard or principle that you have overrided so that you can engage in what you want. It's the sock. It's the sock that we keep on overlooking. And then I recognize something. I keep getting mad at the wrong thing. Like I recognized the problem wasn't my mother. The problem was my patterns. Here it is. This is going to help somebody forgive somebody. This is going to help the person who is dealing with bitterness. And all bitterness does is contaminate the container. This is going to help somebody. Could you be mad at the person, but you keep overlooking the pattern? The pattern. I know you're upset and trying to consider, am I going to call mom on Sunday and tell her happy Mother's Day? Or am I going to continue to ignore her due to what she said to me? Could it be there was a pattern that existed before your mother that she just got in alignment with and we have to deal with the repercussions of her being in alignment with that pattern? Perhaps the problem is not the problem. The problem is the pattern. I know you possibly are upset at that ex-friend or that ex-church or the ex-girlfriend or the ex-boyfriend, ex-husband, ex-wife, but could it be, y'all, could it be there was a pattern that existed before they arrived that caused for them to leave? Could it be the only reason you even entertained them is because there was a pattern that existed before them and when they came in your life, they complimented, listen, they complimented a familiar dysfunctional norm because y'all both have similar patterns. And I wonder how many of us are watching this Therapy Thursday on tonight that that you are mistaking the pattern as chemistry. Here it is, oh, it's getting real. You are mistaking the pattern as friendship. You are mistaking that's my boy or that's my girls as patterns. So you say things like, well, we just click. No, you don't. Your, your patterns are just similar. Change the pattern, y'all no longer click. I wonder how many of us are labeling patterns as compatibility, patterns as friendship, patterns as this is just my personality. Is it really? Or is there a pattern that you got in alignment with and now you label that as your personality? I was getting mad at the wrong person. 
I was upset at my mother, but the problem was not my mother. The problem was my patterns. Please hear me, please hear me. The shadow of every problem is a pattern. <sighs> Did y'all hear what I just said? I need us to like put that in the room in all caps. The shadow of every problem is a pattern. So wherever there is a overthinking problem, it's because of looping mental created scenario patterns. It's the pattern of me making projections about my future and preparing for them in my present that's causing for me to overthink. The shadow of every problem is a pattern. Control problem, the desire to control the outcome pattern. I want to control how this is going to go. I want to control how this is going to turn out. That's your pattern. That's why you have control issues. The shadow of every problem is a pattern. Substance abuse problem, pattern of taking false escapes. <laughs> like weed is just a false escape. Cheap sex is just a false escape. Getting high, or it's just a false escape. That's your pattern. Whenever you want to get away from something, you, you immediately try to find an escape that is temporary. That's the pattern, which is conducive for the substance abuse problem. The shadow of every problem is the pattern. Suicidal problem. Pattern of killing the wrong thing. <laughs> this is so good, y'all. Suicidal problem, I constantly keep battling with suicide. The pattern is I keep killing the wrong stuff. Just like what I share with you, I was risking to kill a relationship with my parent because of a pattern I had. Suicide makes you kill the wrong thing. <sighs> suicide makes you kill the wrong thing. Yes, something has to die, it's just not you. Perhaps the bitterness has to die, not you. The pattern has to die, not you. A relationship has to die, not you. A habit has to die, not you. Suicide makes you kill the wrong thing. Something does have to die, but it's not you because the shadow of every problem is the pattern. This is so good, y'all. And listen, I want us to understand this. The gym membership for a problem, meaning how your problems get swole on them boys. How your problems get muscles is due to the ignorance of a pattern. One more time, the gym membership for your problems, meaning what makes your problems stronger. The gym membership for your problems is the ignorance of a pattern. There's a pattern in your life that you have not identified is problematic and it is shadowed. There's a problem in your life that you have not identified is due to a pattern. I begin to ask myself and my wife, how does trauma, how does verbal abuse, how does cursing people out, how, how does poverty-stricken spending habits, how does poor diets, how does that get passed down from generation to generation to generation. How? It's the normalization of a pattern. <laughs> That's how it goes undetected from bloodline to bloodline, from generation to generation, from baby boomer to millennial, from millennial to generation Z. How does it keep going undetected? It is because the pattern is seen as normal. Hear me, we repeat what we can't discern is broken. This is so good, man. We repeat what we can't discern is broken. Like mistakes hurt you, they do, but patterns break you. Mistakes hurt you, but patterns break you. And there's so many of us, especially when you hear a message like this and we get emails and DMs and calls to the church so many times and letters like, man, I wish, I wish I would have heard this sooner. I wish I would have learned this content and 
this information and this intel sooner, if if I would have heard this in my past, if, if I would have heard this sooner, then possibly I would have made different decisions. And I know, I know how you feel. And I, many times I felt like that. And I pray like, God, if I would have known, if I would have known all of this, my decisions would have been different. And God gave me a perspective shift. And I want to share it with you. For everybody who's ever, who has ever stated these words, I wish I would have known. I would have done this if I would have known. Okay. How about this? Perspective shift. Why not be proud of the person you were in the past? Stay with me. Be proud of the person that you were in the past that decided to keep on going throughout their journey because it led for you to get here on today. That freed me, y'all. How about be proud of who you were in the past, comma, because that person did not quit on the journey. That person did not give up. That person kept on going. That person kept on pursuing. That person kept on going throughout the journey, which has led you to this very moment. That's why in our Destiny Decision series, I did a whole message entitled, Make Peace With Your Past, because I have to make a peace treaty with who I was because that's affecting my current decision-making on today. But if you shift your perspective to where you're like, okay, the person I was in the past never gave up, but they kept on continuing the journey that God is trying to get them to see who they have been, who they have been born to be. That's how you got led to this moment on tonight. This is so good. Maybe the problem is not the problem. The problem is every sock you've overlooked because you figured it's not that bad. Maybe the problem is not the problem. The problem is the pattern because the shadow of every problem is a pattern. Now it makes sense. Now it makes sense why God prescribes a wilderness. Hmm. Now it makes sense why God prescribes for us to go to a brook Cherith. Now it makes sense why God prescribes a season of separation. Because God wants to help us by dealing with the pattern. Look, let me give you Bible. Numbers chapter 11, I want you to see this. Numbers chapter 11, verse 4. It says, Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, who will give us meat to eat? Now, a little biblical context. The children of Israel are out of Egypt. They're out of Egypt and they're heading towards the promised land, Canaan, the land of the land that's flowing with milk and honey, meaning it is agriculturally rich. They're, they're heading towards the promised land. But as they're heading there, they're starting to complain. Who will give us meat to eat? Verse 5, we remember the fish which we freely ate in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. The, the, the scriptures that I want to bring to your attention for just a few more moments. First is verse five, where it says, we remember the fish. <laughs> so we remember the fish that we had in Egypt. So what are they doing? They're rehearsing a pattern. We remember how our appetites used to be in Egypt. We remember how our appetites used to be sustained in 2018. We remember what we used to like in 2019. We remember how they invited us in 2020. We remember how they were cool with us in 2016. We remember all the friends we had in 2014. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt. But now look, verse six says, but now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing except this manna 
before our eyes. There is nothing except what God is using to detox us. There is nothing except what God is using to rewire the pattern. There is nothing except what God is using to perform surgery. There is nothing except God changing our appetite. See that? And the part that stood out to me so powerfully was when they said, but now our whole being is dried up. This stood out to me because I felt as though God asked me this question and I wanna ask it to you. What am I trying to dry up in your life, but you're resisting it because of the pattern being familiar? Talk Holy Spirit, what is God trying to dry up. They said our whole being is dried up and there is nothing except what God is trying to use to train our appetite. There is nothing like I'm being dried up. The only thing I have right now is something that is different from my patterns. What, what is God trying to dry up in your life that you're resisting because it is not a familiar pattern? We don't end up, please hear me, we don't end up at the place we desire. We end up at the place we crave. Hmm. We don't end up at the place we desire. We end up at the place our patterns take us. And the reason a lot of us are struggling right now, wanting to get over it, free from it, break free from it, no longer respond to it, don't want to cry, cry over it anymore. The reason we feel so stuck with a posture, a perspective, or an addiction, or a thought pattern is because the problem is not the problem. I'm trying to get us to see this. The problem is the pattern. The problem is the appetite. The problem is a craving. And that that, like that non, that non-detoxed heart is keeping a leash on the next level self. That non-re, that non-detoxed heart, that non-regenerated heart is the leash that's keeping us from experiencing the next level of ourselves. Because former cravings won't allow you to embrace fresh manna. If I didn't need a haircut, I'd throw my hat. <laughs> Former cravings won't let you embrace fresh manna. They were complaining about the very thing that God was using to give them another appetite. They were complaining about the very thing that God was using to train them. Remember, he said, I'm going to take you to a land of milk and honey. This means this manna is is temporary, temporary. But they're complaining about the temporary season that God placed them in to address the pattern and they complain so much so where they missed the promised land. The first generation of the Israelites, 40 years, they missed the promised land because the thing that God was using to train them, the thing that God was using to detox them from the appetites that they developed in Egypt, which are their patterns. They kept complaining about it. They kept on whining about it. And God was so good and is so good that he gave them quail. He, he gave them quail. He gave them water for, from a rock, but they kept on complaining. And I wonder how many of us, how many of us right now are hyper complainers because we're feeling the drying up of a pattern. This is good. This is good. Former cravings won't allow us to embrace fresh manna. And I'm trying to get us to see. I'm trying to get us to see that we've been going to war with the wrong thing. We think it's the problem. And I'm trying to get you to see it's the pattern of the sock. It's the sock that you keep overlooking that has created to where on Saturday, I'm like, how did my apartment get so dirty? I had to address every day, make sure you put your shirt up. Every day, make sure you put your shoes up. Every day, throw the water bottles away. Every time you eat, wash the dish and put it up. I had to address each sock that I was overlooking. And a lot of us are overlooking the pattern 
but we're blaming our attitude on the problem. Hear me, it's one thing to know the problem, okay? It's one thing to know the problem. It's, th it's another thing to know the origin and where the knots are that's strengthening the grip of the problem. One more time. It's one thing to know the problem. It's another thing to know the origin of the problem and where the knots are that are strengthening the grip of a problem. See, because whenever we come out of a thing due to the repercussions versus reprogramming, oh, that's good. Whenever we come out of a thing due to the repercussions versus reprogramming, the enemy can always tempt us with Egypt meals. Whenever we come out of a thing due to the repercussions, versus reprogramming like you're trying to stop because you got caught whenever you come out of it due to the repercussions versus reprogramming the enemy can always send you people who have former patterns whoever had a pattern that you used to have in your 2018 whoever has a pattern that you used to have in your 2020 whoever has a pattern that you used to have in your past i could send them now to you to try to get you to revert back to and relapse back to the place where God brought you out of because you came out but your patterns didn't. See? You came out but your patterns didn't. Th this is why, this is why I'm so encouraged by everybody who's striving to be intentional with your healing and biblical intelligence. Because your intentionality and your pursuit of healing is needed so that Jesus could dry the blood flow of whatever in your life left you bleeding. Whatever in your life hurt you, you being intentional is assisting Jesus in making sure that that blood flow dries up because he dries up patterns. Look, look at this, look at this. Most of us know the story. I don't even have time to break it down. I just want you to see one passage, Mark chapter five, Verse 29, this is the woman with the issue of blood, right? She wanted to be healed. She was tired of the doctor. She was tired of people saying there's nothing that she could do. She was spending all her resources. She began to pursue Jesus, and we probably overlooked this part. Look, verse 29 says, this is after, he, after she touched him. It says, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. There's that word again. The fountain of her blood was dried up. What is God trying to dry up? Or put it this way. What will God dry up when we pursue to touch him? What will God dry up when we pursue his face? What will God dry up when we have a devoted life? What will God dry up when we have a prayer life? Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. What in your life is God trying to dry up, but we're resisting it due to the familiar comfort of a pattern? First Kings chapter 17, verse seven, it says, and it happened after a while that the brook dried up. I love this, y'all. Um, Elijah, go to this place. I'm going to tell you that the brook's going to sustain you, but I'm going to let the brook dry up. The woman is ceremonially unclean. She's not even supposed to be out in public, but have the faith enough to come to pursue me, and I'm going to dry up your issue. What is God in your life deliberately drying up? Deliberately. We wouldn't be reading this woman's story if she wasn't intentional with their healing and experienced something being dried up. We would never hear about the showdown on Mount Carmel if Elijah's brook never would have dried up. Elijah never would have been able to ask the widow what's in her house if the brook never would have dried up. What is God trying to dry up in your life, but we're resisting it because of the familiar comfort of a pattern? And I want us, I want everybody to say this confession and I, and I just want to pray. I'm going to give us some points and I'm done. But I, I want us to say this confession. Can I get everybody to put this in the room in all caps? Father, dry up 
any and every pattern that's not conducive for my next. I feel, y'all, I'm not even being churchy. I feel that. Everybody, can I get us to put that in the room? Father, dry up any and every pattern that is not conducive for our next. Father God, we hear you and we're asking for you to grant that prayer. Now, many of us don't even recognize by praying that there are things in our life that we like that you want to dry up so that you can send us to our next. There are things in our life that we have gotten comfortable with that you want to dry up so that you can cause us to walk into our next. Whatever it is, oh God, whatever it is in our life, whatever pattern that we keep on looking at a problem without actually seeing that the problem is because of the pattern, help us, God to pursue you. So just like this woman with the issue of blood, we don't know her name, but all we know is her condition and her testimony. Would you help us to be like her in a way of pursuing you to such a degree to where in pursuing you, we dry up our wound. In Jesus' name. And everybody who agrees with that prayer, would you put in the room, amen. Amen. What? I'm going to say it all throughout this message for this Therapy Thursday session. What in your life is God trying to dry up? He's trying to dry up, but we're resisting it because it is a familiar comfort. I was upset at the wrong one. I was upset at my mom because she woke me up. <laughs> she woke me up early on a Saturday morning. But the real issue was a pattern. And a lot of us are mad at the wrong thing because we're overlooking the pattern. Certain people you wouldn't even entertain if you broke up with the pattern. Sometimes what we're labeling as a breakup, it's not really a breakup with them, it's a breakup with a pattern. It hurts so much because it hurts your pattern. Not saying that your emotions don't get hurt in the process. It's just that your emotions are in alignment with the pattern. And so when the pattern and the person leave, you feel devastated because you lost the person up, but you still have the pattern. This is how you end up dating the same person, but a different name. Same person, different name. This is why we, we keep on getting upset with different people, but same situations because the year changed. The pattern didn't. Relationship status changed, but the pattern didn't. Career changed, but the pattern didn't. New house, new spouse, new car, new hair, but still not liking what you see in the mirror, that pattern didn't change. Doesn't matter how many eyelashes you wanna, eye, you wanna add to your eyes, ma'am. It doesn't matter how much you beat your face, that means put makeup on. It doesn't matter how much you bench press in the gym, no matter how swole you get, it still will not remove the pattern of you not liking what you see in the mirror because you haven't recognized that you are made in the apex of God. You are made in the image and likeness of God. And until you allow the sword to renew your mind, even if you change spouses, houses, and careers, the pattern will continue to follow with you. So many of us came in this year, just five months ago saying, new year, new me. But the reality is new year, same outcome because of the same patterns. What pattern in your life is God trying to dry up, but you're resisting it because it is a familiar comfort. I wanna give us some points, okay? I wanna give us some points. First one is a needed wilderness. Can I get everybody put that in the room? A needed wilderness. I know we don't like it, but a needed wilderness. What is that? It is a time in your life where God is introducing you to manna. That's the bread of heaven. God is trying to give you bread to be sustained versus you wanting what Pharaoh used to abuse you. I'm trying to shift your appetite from looking to Pharaoh to now looking to Yahweh. And I could only do that with the wilderness. I have to have a wilderness. So much so, well, we can see this in the text in Matthew chapter four, verse one. It says, then Jesus was led up by the devil. Did I read that wrong? Then Jesus was led up by a demon. Read it wrong? Then Jesus was led up by evil. No, 
Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into what? The promised land? No, into the wilderness. See, this is the process of the anointed. This is the process of the called. This is the process of the bloodline shifter. This is the process for those who are going to make a difference. The Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The Spirit led him up. And a lot of us, a lot of us are rebuking what God is using to rebuke your pattern. Woo! A lot of us are rebuking what God is using to rebuke your pattern in the wilderness. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now the tempter came to him, speaking of the devil. He said, if you are the son of God, command these stones become bread. Now listen, this shows me something about the enemy. When I was playing sports, I recognized that you have to study film. So I'm looking right here. This is like a film session. You can kind of study how the enemy operates. Once Jesus had fasted 40 days, he was hungry. Now the enemy is trying to get him to misuse his power and question his identity because he's hungry. Now look, the enemy was attacking his identity and his appetite. Why? Because he knows that cravings will make you forget who you are. Cravings will make you forget the process that you said you need to become who you're called to be. Hey, if, if you're the son of God, challenging identity. If you are the son of God, trying to get you to question who you are, command these stones to become bread. Use your power in a perverted way to fulfill a temporary need. This is so good. And if you recognize, this is how the enemy uses his warfare strategy on us. Whenever you're hungry, relationally, physically, emotionally, whenever you're hungry, he will try to present you with the counterfeit. Present you with the counterfeit so that you can misuse the purpose of the wilderness. Misuse the purpose of the wilderness, meaning be strong and learn how to detox from Egypt appetite. Strengthen your, strengthen your spirit because fasting strengthens your no. And this is for somebody, whenever you fast, whatever rages the most is what's dying the most. So if you're fasting and watching Netflix is raging the most, that's what needs to die the most in your life. If you're fasting and it's porn or whatever it is that you're really trying to train yourself, listen, I run this and the Holy Spirit does too. Whatever rages the most shows us what the enemy has been using and trafficking in a pattern to keep you stuck in a problematic season. What if I told you, for everybody watching this, God is leading you into a wilderness. Nobody shouted. I don't see no fire emoji in the chat. <laughs> uh, nobody saying, oh, preach. What if I told you that God is sending you into a wilderness? See, all I gotta say is, like anytime somebody's preaching, if you ever like reach a bad point in your sermon, <laughs> like you lose track of your notes, all you gotta say is, it's coming. That's it. It's coming. Yo, yo, whatever you've been praying for, it's coming. Yeah, people start shouting. But what if I were to tell you that God is sending you a wilderness? <laughs> He's sending you a wilderness for the purpose of dealing with your pattern. I know we don't thank God for a wilderness season or, or a, a cherith season, but what you become from God dealing with your pattern is what you should be celebrating about now because the finish line is not the only place you celebrate. The finish line is not the only place you rejoice. So many of us are discouraged because you're looking at the destination versus detoxing in the journey. God will lead us to a wilderness. Why? Because it is the place where he is rewiring your patterns. God will lead us to a wilderness. Why? Because many of us currently, right now, watching this Therapy Thursday, you have an Egypt appetite 
but a promised land address. Woo! You have an Egypt appetite, but a promised land address. And God is saying, okay, I don't want you to look to Pharaoh anymore. I don't want you mad at them anymore. I don't want you to blame them anymore. The problem is not the problem. The problem is the pattern. Yes, you have a promised land address, and I'm taking you there. But currently, you have an Egypt appetite. Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot's daughters, were spared from Sodom and Gomorrah. But Sodom and Gomorrah was still in them. It still was their pattern. That's why they got their father drunk and had sex with him. Sodom and Gomorrah patterns. And God loves you, and he loves me so much, where he will not let you board the flight of next level with hazardous material. And that hazardous explosive material is your patterns. Point number two, God wants to expose the pattern. Expose the pattern. Like fighting the problem is cutting the twig. That's it. Fighting the problem is cutting the twig. Finding the pattern is plucking up the root. Expose the pattern. This is why I, I know without a shot of a doubt, God has led for us to do Therapy Thursday week after week after week. Because Sunday, first of all, Sunday is not enough. Sunday is not enough. And then on top of that, there's some patterns that are getting in the way of our intimacy with God. There's some healing that has to happen that's getting in the way of us reflecting God in the earth. Like Christians are supposed to be mirrors of Christ. But sadly today, a lot of the mirrors have no reflection. So God is like, okay, I want them to be light, not shade. I want them to be salt, not sugar. I want them to be fruitful, not barren. But what's getting in the way of that is the pattern. So I have to expose the pattern, and that's what Therapy Thursday is doing, is unearthing some patterns. The way you talk, the way you process information, the way your Bible is a dust collector, that's a pattern that's creating problems because the shadow of every, every problem is a pattern. So I want to expose you, which is why I kept saying all throughout, all throughout Therapy Thursday three weeks ago, if you could trace it, you can unlearn it. What sock do you need to trace? What sock do you need to trace so that you can see it's not my mom that's the problem. It's my pattern. Expose it. Expose the pattern so that the change can be organic. We have a whole generation that has, that has like sad souls but happy pictures. <laughs> sad souls but happy pictures. And God wants you to have organic joy. And the way he helps us to have that is by exposing the pattern. Number three, a resolve to remain. These Israelites kept on complaining. In Egypt, we remember we had leaks. In Egypt, oh Moses, if you would let us just die in Egypt, we told you it's better to leave us in Egypt. They were complaining so much because of the discomfort of God rewiring the pattern. When it's uncomfortable, stay in it. Uncomfortable, stay. I know it hurts, but God is changing something in you. And when you forfeit the process, you forfeit what's being made. Steadfastness is the biblical theological word. God needs you to be steadfast. Endure hardness as a what? Good soldier of Christ Jesus. He's telling you is there's times being a soldier is gonna be hard. Don't run, endure. Endure means to remain, make a resolve, draw a line of demarcation in the sand. I'm not going back. I'm not folding. I'm not quitting because reaped harvest is reserved for the planting. And a lot of us aren't experiencing your harvest and you're keeping it stuck in transit because you keep quitting when it gets hard. And the only reason it's hard is because you're used to fish of Egypt versus manna in the wilderness. God give us the strength to have an appetite for manna in the wilderness because you are trying to change our pattern. It's not permanent. The manna is not permanent. It's temporary. It's just enough to sustain you so that I can rewire you from the pattern. And last point, renew the mind. 
renew the mind. If you actually read your Bible, you will see how many areas in your life have unhealthy patterns. <laughs> so like, if you read bitter water and sweet water should not come out the same well, okay? And if you curse people out, that's showing you, hmm, that's a pattern that I, I, I might need to change because I see in the Word it says that bitter water and sweet water shouldn't come from the same well. You wouldn't know that if you didn't read your Bible. There must not be a hint of sexual immorality. I'm like, okay, all right. So I was gonna go over his house, right? Like we were gonna do a vacation for Memorial Day weekend. But in Texas, must not be a hint of sexual immorality. The word of God is a sword that will help you sever the pattern. But if I don't know his voice in devotion, I said it before, I'm not gonna know his voice in direction. The reason many of us, our discernment is so low is because our Bible reading is so minimal. The reason our patterns are so strong is because our devoted lives are so weak. They're so weak. The sword, it is the only offensive weapon you have. The sword of the spirit. It is a double-edged sword. It cuts me and it cuts you serving it. Any pastor that is not getting cut, any servant spiritual leader that's not getting cut does not live by the text. It's a double-edged sword. It cuts me and it cuts you. But the way to deal with these patterns is first understand I need a wilderness. That is a season where God is rewiring me. Second, understand God needs to expose the pattern because I cannot go to war with an enemy I do not know exist. Okay? And number three, a resolve to remain. When it gets hard, I must be steadfast and renew my mind. I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. It says, be ye transformed, not by going to church. Be ye transformed, not by just telling people I read this scripture. Do both, but the way you're really going to be transformed is by the renewing of your mind. The same way you pumped in so much filth is the same way I need you to pump in so much word. And just like me, fresh out of college, the same way I had habits that was making my apartment dirty is the same way I, need, I needed to establish habits to keep my apartment clean. Both of them. You could have a pattern that could be your demise or a pattern that could be your elevator. It's up to you. It's up to you. But the way we do it is by stop overlooking the sock. Father, and this moment we pray. First and foremost, God, forgive us. Forgive us for complaining and, and not trusting the process of the wilderness as you rewire our appetites. Forgive us for not trusting that your plan is better. It's the first thing we ask, God. And secondly, Father, we ask for you to expose, reveal, so that you can remove every pattern in our life that's not conducive for our next and whatever, whatever you have to dry up so that we may be able to be believers that can shine bright for you, dry it up. And most importantly, God, I pray that we have a devoted life, a devoted life so that the areas that we need to change. More than what I could ever say or another pastor or a spiritual leader, the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of us will give us the enlightenment of areas in our life that are a sock that's contributing to filth in an area in our hearts. Expose us and help us to pursue you so that we can demolish the pattern and stop blaming the problem because the problem is not the problem the problem is the pattern. In Jesus' name, we ask for you to do it. Amen.